Hello! You are listening to Chicago Children's Theater's latest radio play. Welcome back to X Marks a Spot, Episode 4, The Treasure Hunt. This show was designed with and for the blind or visually impaired community. Melody, a character in this play, has a visual impairment, uses a cane to get around, and reads and writes using Braille. As always, we invite you to dim the lights, close your eyes, and join us on this adventure. Last time we were with the Otis children, they had just found out about a jewel heist in their neighborhood. Now, they head to the beach to make sure they find those jewels before anyone else. Shazam! Here is the place we last saw the fairy. We're never going to find those jewels without him. We gotta just make a wish to find them. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, make the wish, Dad. I wish we could find those jewels. <laughs> wish number three is on its way. <laughs> a jiggity jig. You dig? That's it. Dig. Let's dig it right here, where we meet the X. Sky! There's no room over here. Fine. You guys are so mean to me, I'll go dig over in the grass. Yeah, real good idea. Hey, I found something. That's just the giant pillowcase. No, look. <gasps> oh. Ooh. <laughs> Feel these jewels. This one is the missing tiara. And this was like a beautiful necklace that a queen would wear. Melody puts on a few more pieces of jewelry and then puts the tiara on top of her head. She moves her head around slowly and majestically like a queen. The tiara is heavy and cold to the touch. She imagines what life is like for people who wear that kind of jewelry. Let's book it back to the house and surprise mother before she finishes work. We are now in Mother's room. Together, the children joyfully decorate Mother's small, plain bedroom with sparkly, colorful jewels. Look how beautiful it looks. Then if we can get her to hurry up and sell them before midnight, she'll have all the money she needs to take us back to Chicago. Yeah, let's go. The children anxiously await their mother, who, humming a happy tune, returns from the kitchen where she had just been baking fresh blueberry pies for the guests. When she opens her bedroom door and sees the stolen jewels strewn across the room, instead of shouts of delight, mother lets out a terrifying and long scream that the entire neighborhood can hear. She immediately calls the local sheriff. Oh my god, mom is flipping out. She's having an actual cow. Now what do we do? Tell the truth? The Otis children are interrogated by Sheriff Nesbitt, a fairly uncool, middle-aged, portly fellow. The sheriff is wearing a white cowboy hat and a white jacket with a shiny silver badge pinned on it. He's writing notes on a bright pink notebook. <laughs> okay, kiddos. Why don't we just, uh, let's just go over this one more time, okay? Uh, whenever you're ready, you can just go uh, ahead and tell me what happened. Still we still just moved to Michigan, even though we really didn't want to. But then we have the sand fairy with a big fluffy nose, and he told us that he would grant us three wishes. So we accidentally wasted our first wish, and I wanted to use the second wish for a dog, which would have been totally far out. But we got wings instead. And then we wish for the jewels, and then actually. It worked. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, now hold on. Everyone's talking at once. Okay, now. <laughs> Why don't we just see if I got all that down, okay? <laughs> so, you moved to Michigan from Chicago after your dad joined the army and your mom had to get a different job and you haven't made very many friends because making friends is tough. So, you went down to the beach with your brother Peanut, who you sometimes call Angel. You dug in the sand. You found a fairy. The fairy gave you three wishes. <laughs> and then you wound up here. <laughs> Did I get all that right? Well, kind of. Yeah, but you forgot the sand fairy. The sand fairy part is true. We can show you. <laughs> oh, you don't say, huh? 
<laughs> a real fairy with a furry nose, huh? <laughs> well, I hate to break it to you, but uh, sounds like somebody tricked you, naive city kids. <laughs> Okay, I just need everyone's help here getting all the jewels back in the bag. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okie dokie, thank you. Hey, don't be embarrassed. Happens to the best of us. You know, old Sheriff Nesbitt has been duped before. I've been tricked. <laughs> you know, oh, back in the day, I met a man on the beach who said he was going to show me the Aurora Borealis. <laughs> well, I can tell you right now, that is not what happened, you know. Fool me once, shame on... Me for me twice. Oh, jeez. Well, okay. Uh, anyway, kids, uh, just know that that mother of yours is the real jewel, you know? So be good. Because, uh, cause, you know, you should. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> and I'll uh, catch you on the flip side. <clears throat> Do uh, young folks still say that? Nope. nope. <laughs> of course they don't. <laughs> Of course, silly Sheriff Nesbitt, not with the times. Okay, well, <laughs> well, it's nice meeting you, and I'll see you all around. <laughs> Sheriff Nesbitt, out! <laughs> the children meekly go outside into the yard and push a completely clueless little peanut on a swing. wasn't so hot. No, it was the opposite of hot. And also totally uncool. Devin, it's your turn to push him. Okay. And we gotta find the sandberry one more time and beg it to give us one more wish. Let's bring it back to the beach before it's gone forever. Come on, Peanut. No, uh no, uh <laughs> Say bye bye to the swing. No, 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 bye bye swing. <laughs> the children take off for the beach and for the X mark in the sand. The children find and pull the cranky sand fairy up from the sandy pit and place it on an old birch log. <laughs> Can't you count? for that? We're just kids. What can we do? You should stop taking what's around you for granted and learn to grow right where you're planted. <laughs> the sand fairy disappears into the sand. What? That's it? Is it gone? Yup. That's it. What do you think it was saying? I have no idea. Some fairy nonsense. I guess that's it then. Oh, oh, uh, Dada? Of course Dad is coming back home, Peanut. I miss him too. He wouldn't know what to do to make Mom happy. I still haven't finished writing him my letter on my Brill Lighter. I want Dad to know where we are and what it's like here. He maybe would because it's not like Chicago. What if we write a letter together? I can write some braille, and you two can write the rest. And we can send him the map. The children, with no wishes left, hurried home to start writing their letter. It had been so long since they heard from their father, and so much had happened since he left. They'd been uprooted from their lives in Chicago, and made to move to Michigan, into a new home with new neighbors and new beaches. Their dad would be able to make this new house a home, but... He was on another continent, on the other side of the world. In the next episode, the Otis kids will write to their father in Vietnam so they can tell him all about Michigan, the new house, and especially the Sand Fairy. We'll see you then. Now that that episode's over, let's do an activity together. In this episode, the Otis children went to all sorts of places, like 
the beach, their house, and their backyard. In all those places, we used sound to tell you where we were. Let's see how well we were all listening. Make a list of all the sounds you remember hearing in this episode. Like, uh, when the kids were at the beach digging for jewels, what could you hear? Do you remember what you heard when the kids found the jewels? What were some of the things you heard when the kids placed the jewels around their mother's room? What did it sound like when the kids went into the yard after the sheriff left? <laughs>